to see some assists. Seth Greenberg was in studios talking about being a playmaker. Oh, my goodness! Oh, what an elevation and finish by Carson Edwards. Third and five. Wow. Farquhar, Farquhar looking for Harris. Harris able to get that ball, but can't do anything with it. Now it's back out to McLaughlin. McLaughlin for three, and it's good. Carissa McLaughlin from distance. 65-63, Purdue leads. As Everett squares, gets it down. Here comes Fascia, the squeeze in time. And Everett's to first safely as well. Purdue tried a squeeze play on Friday, it didn't work. This time, Wazikowski gambles again and it pays off. Game. Purdue, gonna try to tie it. Good ball, crossed in, still loose! Denied at the line, but then finished by Haas! You knew it was coming! Haas with the equalizer, and we're tied at two. Kylie Haas. Right place, right time. Just pokes that second ball in. Has not looked rattled by the pressure. Blau launches. Deep ball again to right. Ball and the touchdown. The second paratrooper Blau's thrown to right. This is a carbon copy of the one in the first half from Blau to right, matched up on Riley Moss, the freshman corner once again. Coming off of a loss that they suffered to Michigan on Friday afternoon. That game had to be rescheduled because of the weather. There's a turnover and take and two. Sarah Clark. Setting up a perfect cross. Left side, Kylie Haas almost oh. found the back of the net, did she? Yes! And that's the equalizer for Kylie Haas. The right place at the right time, I don't know. I think that one was planned ahead because the link up between those two has been unstoppable this season. More in motion, they get it to him. More in space, a burst of speed. A first down for Purdue, he's still going! Touch back! Touchdown! But this is what you gotta love. This kid squats 600 pounds. Pryor has him. There's five Ohio State white jerseys right around just kind of looking at him, thinking he's down. But with this kid's leg drive and his heart, you better make sure he's on the ground. One missed tackle. Here's a two missed tackles. Roll shot. Played by Lebo. That ball going out, kept alive, Peters. Means, uh-oh. That's going to be down the line and left, could be trouble. This is Sage right on the line. He's able to get to it. Then all the way across the field to double up Clay Dungan at first. What a hose from Johnny Sage in left as he unleashed the howitzer to double up Clay Dungan, and there's two away. Laser guided missile from 15 over and left. Well, fly ball out down the line and left. Johnny Sage makes the catch and then on a line, one hop to double up Clay Dungan. Shot clock is off, 4.2 seconds left. Odin the inbounder, McLaughlin step back three, it is good! It is good for McLaughlin! Get speed aboard, and now you got something to work with. The 3 1, that's ball four, and it trickles away. He doesn't see it. Beam rounding first, they're going to wave him around to second, and Milo Beam will reach second. Oh. Nobody's covering third, but he's covering third, and he takes third. I've never seen that before. The 3 1. Bounce 
bouncing ball. Base hit. Purdue wins it. Evan Warden with the walk-off winner. 5-4 Purdue advances one win away from the Big Ten Championship game. Durham staring at Edwards. Edwards fading away. Tapped by Harms. He just went right over Right over Morgan. A lot of times this might be called. Morgan with a pretty good block out, but Harms just sneaks his left hand in there and gets it to go. It's Smith. Justin Smith. No! Purdue survives! 48-46. Left side into left field. That'll bring a couple Boilermakers home, make it three. Big reaction there on second base. Lexi Huffman ties it all up at seven with a big shot into left field. A little early. Now again into left field, the grounder. Can she make it home? Lexi Huffman slides into home plate. That'll do it. This is one for the history books, the walk-off win, and the Boilermakers win at home after playing from behind nearly all day.